negative charge, that means almost that this thought comes back in and forces us to reconsider that same thought, perhaps from a slightly different viewpoint, maybe from more of a negative angle. Likewise, if we were to send out a very negative thought out there and send that out, it would come back in negative form. The same information would come back, but probably with a different consideration, different view, because it has the charge is slightly different now. So the thought itself goes out and comes back, but the energy by which carries it polarizes and returns the opposite polarization. Okay? So what we're working for here in our evolution uh, is the fact that we can send thoughts out, and we can send them out positive. They'll come back, forcing us probably to consider them kind of from a, a negative viewpoint. We then put our mind to work, start crunching away and thinking about this idea, and that forces growth. You see, the universe has to be negative and positive all the time. If everything was really good, then there wouldn't be any way of learning. It would just be like stagnation. But the creation itself is constantly evolving, and so are we. And this is the learning process. This also starts to begin to uh, point out the fact that how valuable an open mind is. If you send thoughts out all the time, if you're negative about everything that goes out all the time, and you refuse to consider any positive sides to a, uh, an argument or any other positive information about that, you become very closed-minded. Then your learning is stagnated, right? Because if you refuse to consider any other viewpoint, like you know all there is to know now, that's it, I'm a know-it-all, well, that's, that stumps your growth. So an open mind is actually a sign of intelligence. It's a sign of clear thinking. It's a sign of growth. If a person does continually continue to think negative, maybe they're the type of person that's always saying, oh, I can't do that, or that's too difficult, or oh, I just, I'm just never successful at those sort of things just can't handle it, or they're always depressed, you know, things just don't go my way, no, I don't want to go out, I'm just going to stay home and watch TV. They just kind of get a, a poor, sad, woe was me view towards life. Well, as they continue to reinforce that type of thinking, what are they doing? They're programming their brain to believe it, their subconscious now believes it, and that's who they become. So the effects of this negative thinking then really pull them down, almost... Uh, does not allow them at all to consider anything positive about their life because they're convinced there just couldn't be anything positive. So they're not paying any attention at all to this potential, this uh, boomerang effect that's actually going on. The boomerang effect, you have to learn to sense it. You have to learn to watch for it. Thoughts will come back very quickly, uh, at least within three days. And when they come back, if you're open to it, if you program yourself to pay attention and feel for it, it means that you may send a thought out, and when it comes back, It'll come back in kind of the form like to be able to consider that thought from an opposing viewpoint or slightly different attitude towards it. And if you can do that, then that's what growth is all about. You consider things from different directions and allow other information to come in. Real positive thinking is actually neutral positive. When you have a balance between your positive thinking about something and your negative, when you've considered all the different viewpoints, and then you come to kind of a neutral point of view, but you've considered everything, that's what positive thinking actually is. Positive thinking isn't just thinking everything always positive, because you're not considering the other viewpoints then. So you're not really learning anything. You're only considering your viewpoint. So allow... Uh, negative thoughts and positive thoughts to come along and that really translates to mean considering both sides of things be open-minded and learn that your real positive thinking is what happens after considering both sides you reach conclusions that allows you to balance out the positive and the neutral in other words anyone can actually learn to control their thinking and control their life Paying attention and learning to observe the boomerang effect that happens in our mind all the time is a method by which we can start to monitor our thoughts and understand how we think. Well, I've talked a lot about thinking and power. What all this leads to, really, if you'll remember the diagram from our material side and our spiritual side, is that a person who has a stricken or sick psyche is a person who is thinking improperly or illogically, and over a period of time, their psyche, which is our feelings, our persona, our thinking about things and so forth, our sensitivity to the world, our viewpoint, our approach, our attitude, our paradigm, all these things fall within the realm of what a psyche is. When our psyche's got to the point where it's sick, 
That means a person who has continually, through reinforced negative thinking, is creating illness in the psyche. Okay? That has to be changed. And that's not real simple, but it's quite possible. If a person has found themselves in a particular point in life where there's been so much reinforced negative thinking year after year, even though it might be slight, it just builds up. It gets reinforced. The psyche then, and let's think of the psyche then, is really our, our viewpoint of the world, our approach to life, how we view the world. At that point, our psyche then becomes ill, which means that the psyche just has a negative or sick sort of viewpoint of life. It can no longer think healthy, happy, positive, lively, lovely. It's not capable of the beautiful thought, of the positive thought. It cannot create a happy future for itself because it is convinced that life is negative, life is not good. Well, we have to do something about that, though, because the negative, here's what happens. When we go about fixing a stricken psyche, we'll call it stricken or ill psyche, if we are find ourselves in that position or someone else, how do we fix it? How do we cure a stricken psyche? Well, to begin with, to refer back to our diagram of the material and the spiritual, let's be reminded of one thing, how the mechanism works. The conscious mind gathers the information. It very quickly then checks with the subconscious mind to see what data we have on that. The subconscious mind is the computer, the motor, how we do things, our, our working machinery that helps us you know, create our logic. The subconscious mind is a storehouse, the memory block of all of our experiences that we have in our material life. So by virtue of that, it develops its own will, its own attitudes, emotions, and feelings about, not feelings, but attitudes about things. It has knee-jerk response. Uh, it's your inventory of data on stuff. So a thought comes in, say, uh, someone comes up to you and says, would you like to donate $50 to this worthy cause here? Uh, we're going to save uh, this special tree that grows out in the forest. And maybe you have an attitude about trees or whatever. That attitude comes forward in your subconscious response. If you have a very negative attitude about a lot of things, your overall will or your overall subconscious reaction to things becomes very negative. If you've reached a point where you, know, you view the world negatively, then your subconscious reacts to everything that way. And every time you're presented with new information or something in life to confront, you're going to react negatively. Of course, you won't think so. That's just who you are. But to the outside world, it will be easy to spot you. Well, when your psyche becomes stricken, the problem is that we can start to change how we feel about things and our attitude about life and our psyche. We can, but the problem is your subconscious is one, going to have to want to play a part in that all the time. So we have to stop that. We have to learn to curb the constant negative attitude of our own subconscious, which we've programmed over the years all the time. See, that's a result of constant worrying and negative thinking all the time. It builds up this power. Power thinking becomes negative. The consciousness of the stricken psyche must start to control the subconscious until the subconscious acknowledges the way of thinking of the consciousness as a knowledgeable fact. That means we've got to persuade or we have to reprogram the subconscious somehow. And we're going to have to find a way of doing that. Because the subconscious ultimately dictates the feelings of the psyche. And we've got to make the psyche healthy by reprogramming the subconscious. And that's not real simple. And in fact, it's kind of difficult because every time we try to think in a more positive fashion or in a happier fashion, a happier thought, the subconscious is going to send out all of its negative thoughts. After all, it's just loaded with them. So every time you would try to daydream or you know try to... Uh, excuse me, have a positive approach to something, your subconscious is going to beat it down. Now, if you've ever talked to someone who basically has a negative view of life or just isn't getting anywhere, it's exactly what you find, isn't it? Uh, if you know someone...